opening comments. Post if you can go on to Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome to our Q3 financial year 23 earnings call. It gives me immense pleasure to share with you that we just turned six. This is our sixth anniversary. It is an important milestone for us because today we serve 7.3 million customers through 607 branches and an employee strength of 17,000. These six years have been a mixed bag of learnings and achievements in our journey towards becoming a leading mass market bank. Q3 has been another good quarter for Rajivan as it marks more than 12 months of being profitable after a rough patch. Another update is RBI extending my tenure as MD. During this period of the extension, the board would identify potential candidates and they would work with me for a smooth transition to take the Ujjivan journey for forward. Coming to our Q3 performance, it was an all-round performance with strong disbursements, gross, gross loan book growth, and an even better deposit growth. Collection continues to be good and credit quality has improved further. This quarter, even post-implementation of the new credit MFI norms, we dispersed 4,838 crores, an almost another record from the previous quarter. The system took a little while to settle down with the new norms, but now all is back to normal. In fact, December 22 was the highest ever monthly disbursement for Ujjivan. Our gross loan books grew 5% sequentially to 21,895 crores after total write-off of 179 crores. While overall all asset businesses performed well, you would have noticed a small decline in the MSE book. This is in line with what we have been mentioning since the last two calls that we are adjusting our strategy there and will see growth once all changes are in place and systems are also upgraded for that. Asset growth was outpaced by the growth of our deposits, which grew at 14% sequentially, registering the highest ever quarterly inflow of 2,806 crores. Growth in deposits is in line with our guidance of reducing the CD ratio and bringing it closer to 80% in line with the rest of the banking industry. Our retail deposits grew 15% sequentially and CASA grew 10% sequentially in a market where most banks are witnessing negative CASA growth. I believe this underlines our efforts towards building a granular liability franchise. On the asset quality, our collection efficiency continues to be around 100% taking our par further down to 4.9% from 6.1% as of September 22. If you look for year-on-year -year improvement, it is around 1,000 basis points. As of December 22, our GNPA is at 3.4% and NNPA is just 0.05%. Also, our SMA book as well as restructured book have shrunk further, indicating the reduced stress the restructured book is now just 302 crores, with collections almost in line with the overall book. On profitability side, our pre-provision operating profit stands at 389 crores, with a PAT of 293 crores. NIM for the second for this quarter was 9.4 percent. For the nine-month period, our pre-provision operating profit stands at 1,074 crores with a profit after tax of 790 crores, with a net interest margin of 9.6%. We expect Q4-23 to be similar to Q3-23. Uh, now an update on the merger with UFSL. As per the update published by SEBI on their website, website bases our submission of scheme documents with the exchanges. The NOCs have been received from both the BSC and NSC on January 6th, and SEBI is in the process of seeking clarification from other regulatory bodies. Further, 
Reserve Bank of India has given its notice to our application, which was uploaded on the exchanges last night. Once we are in receipt of the SEBI clearance, we will proceed to file the application with the NCLT. On submission of our application with the NCLT and on receipt of their requisite regulatory and shareholders' approval, we will positively expect to get the proposal, uh, the proposed merger completed by September this year. Now, uh, just a little bit on the outlook for the year ahead and for the fourth quarter. Going ahead, we will be growing our presence both physically and digitally. In Q3, we added eight branches, marking our foray into the new state, Telangana. As of today, we have 606 branches. In fact, 607, we have just opened one this today, <coughs> and are looking to add more this quarter. Financial year 24 branch edition would be close to between 50 and 70. Focus is to expand in deposit-rich catchment areas. In addition, as we have always maintained, we would look to add multiple connect points with our customers using technology as an enabler. Our digital initi initiatives are towards direct acquisition of liability and asset customers, fintech partnerships, focus on our IBMB platform to generate more business. Our Hello Ujjivan mobile app is the step in that direction. This has already had 60,000 downloads within a month. With this app, we wish to increase digital penetration among our mass market customers and inculcate a banking habit. Also, we wish to capitalize this asset to disperse MFI loans with very limited human intervention and focus on digital collections as well. The process would be tedious and gradual, but has high potential of benefits like improved collection, productivity, and reduced OPEX. We also look forward to automate the processes and use RPAs to improve productivity and service quality. With our digital taking uh, shape, we are also working on shifting customers to cashless alternatives. During FY23, we have invested on our digital capab capabilities like video banking, KYC, access management, and others. These would also help us in our digital journey. Microbanking continues to be well backed by strong credit demand. While we did see some hiccups in process due to implementation of the new MFI credit norms, but that has all settled down now and we are seeing good disbursements. We continue to invest in the business and look to newer avenues like QR code, cashless collection, DC partnerships and others. The micro and small enterprises, we are currently in a transition phase and investing in expanding our product suites and services to be more relevant to the semi-formal and formal segment. Also, we are upgrading our technology platform to serve the customers better. The other businesses that we have, one is housing. We are pleased to say that we have crossed the 3,000 crore OSP this year for housing. Incrementally, we are focusing on semi-formal in Tier 2 and Tier 3 towns. We implemented a state-wise collection collateral policy, an ROI matrix, and recently an increased productivity. Consequently, the business has turned profitable. And we have now opened a couple of new asset centers as well, where housing will be operating out of these centers. Vehicle finance, our IT integration is in place. We look to scale up the business in the coming year once this is fully operational. Currently, we are doing limited business majorly with ETB MFI customers. Now we are looking to focus on the new to bank customers as well. Among other secured businesses, we are looking to uh, scale up our gold loan business once we, the uh, test marketing is completed, and this will be done commercially across 50 branches. Also, our NBFC lending business is doing well with nil delinquencies. We are focusing on our fee income with addition of new products like 3-in-1 account, NPS, and mutual funds in FY24. We are confident that the new initiatives will start materializing in the second half of 24, one by one, and you will see this impact. 
Overall, we expect to grow our gross loan book by about 25% in FY24. Given increase in cost of funds, there would be some pressure on NIMS, which we would need to manage by focusing on increasing CASA, especially the CAR part of it, through yield expansion. While we would continue to invest in the tech and digital platforms as well as brand visibility, we would keep cost-income ratio under control. FY23 has been an abnormal year in terms of credit cost. Abnormal, what I mean is very good year in terms of credit cost. Next year, we expect provisions to move up towards 1% on average gross loan book and recoveries. Though significant, this would be lower than financial year 23. We would be able to share more details once we, have, once we close the financial year. Dynamic macroeconomic and geopolitical factors along with inflation and rate scenario would be key monitorable items. However, given our business model and investment in various banking platforms, we are confident of a strong Q4 and a good fiscal 2024. I'd like to stop here and request the operator to begin with Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. First question is from the line of Renish Harishbhai Bua from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, and congratulations on the reset of number. So, sir, just two questions. One on the, uh, you know, the deposit side. Though the uh, absolute uh, deposit acquisition has been uh, robust in the quarter, uh, but when we look at the customer acquisition run rate, uh, you know, which is uh, roughly around uh, 3 lakh per quarter, uh, so that has actually uh, declined this quarter. So, can you uh, please throw some light on what is happening there in terms of the customer acquisition? Is there any particular channel, let's say, uh, a digital or any particular geography uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, under pressure, which is leading to the lower customer acquisition? Hi, this is Carol. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, so uh, what we are doing currently is that we are focusing a lot more on the quality acquisition than over quantity and uh, increasing the acquisition of higher ATS customers. And that's the reason why you see a slight dip there. Um, okay. But uh, this is just a one-off, and uh, we will be uh, increasing our customer acquisition. Got it, got it. Uh, thank you uh, on that. So my second question is on the uh, affect strategy side. You know? So uh, if we look at the last uh, three, four quarters trend uh, in terms of AUM mix, uh, you know, the, the share of MFI has been going up uh, steadily, uh, which is in contrast to what, uh, you know, we have been stated uh, in our SSP journey of uh, improving this uh, technique. So, sir, what would be the strategy uh, going into 24-25 in terms of AUM mix? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I, I think, uh, you know, we have outlined our longer-term strategy, which is to bring, build a balance 50-50 between secured and unsecured. As I, as I just mentioned, we are developing several of our secured products, which will be launched, you know, in, into the market next year. That will help us. And we are also growing our secured housing and MSC portfolios, uh, there are some system changes which are taking place right now, which will help us to, you know, grow these portfolios faster. So in the short run, what has happened is that post-COVID, uh, we were more prepared with the uh, microbanking business as an overall to re, 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 to come out of COVID. So that is why it has grown faster. But eventually, you know, the other businesses, the secured portfolios, will have to catch up and overtake in terms of rate of growth. But, uh, you know, microbanking will continue to be an important part of our portfolio. And as I said, eventually in five years or thereabouts, we are looking at a 50-50 breakup between secured and unsecured assets. Also, Renish, in the interim, as we 
uh, as Mr. Davis mentioned, that the micro banking portfolio is doing much better. We also need to see that the micro banking portfolio is much more profitable also in giving us that kind of uh, income that is required for the business to invest in all other businesses that we have. Got it. So just the last follow up on the uh, deposit side. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, what is the uh, deposit rate hike uh, we have taken, let's say, during the last two four months? Come again, Renish. Okay. Which rate uh, hike are you talking rate? about? Deposit rates, TD rates. So we have not taken any TD rate hike after November. The last we took was November and after that market has seen a decent amount of rate hike and we have not been taking rate hikes. We are still seeing very good flow on our liquidity side, our uh, deposit intake. We just sort of mentioned, Mr. David mentioned in his speech also, this quarter was very good in terms of uh, overall deposit inflow. In fact, we got 2,800 crore of deposit inflow. And January 2, we saw a very good amount of deposit inflow. So we haven't taken rate hike, and uh, as of now, we are feeling we feel comfortable with where we stand today. Oh, so okay, okay. So despite the not taking the rate hike, uh, we are seeing the incremental flows to be much higher. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So we, we, we took the rate hike in November, but we are happy with that hike. We are not chasing uh, to look at any more hikes in the near term. So we will, we will watch the market, but what we did in November was adequate for us. Got it, got it. No, because uh, uh, in December, January, actually, uh, the uh, the rate hike uh, gathered pace. So I was just wondering, uh, we have not uh, yet taken that rate hike and uh, despite that we are uh, able to uh, garner this one before. Okay. Yeah, we have not participated in that chase of December, January. So okay. whatever we did in November has helped us uh, get the deposit rate going, uh, deposit garnering going. Okay. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shripal Doshi from Equarius. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good evening and thank you for giving me the opportunity and congrats for the good set of numbers. So the first question was for uh, the individual loan category, micro individual loan category. So wanted to understand uh, when do we, is it only focused towards captive customers, captive JLG customers? And secondly, uh, when do, after how many cycles of, you know, being in the JLG cycle, or do we shift the JLG customer to micro individual category? So hi, thank you for the question. <clears throat> uh, individual loan is something which we, which is uh, you know, uh, we offer to our customers after for, uh, one uh, you know completion of one GL cycle. But largely we have seen that customers opt for uh, individual loan lending generally after two or three cycles. Uh, this is answer to your first question. Second is uh, 90 percent. Yeah, 90 percent of our customers uh, in individual loans are the ones who graduate from the group loans. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's existing customers. Existing customers. Largely, they are existing customers. So yeah, well, we have product for both uh, captive customers as well as open market customer acquisition. But we have, we have largely focused on our internal customers as we have a large customer base. So more than 90, uh, 90, close to 95 percent customer acquisition happens through graduation of GL customers. Okay, got it. And sir, how is the process for this? Like uh, the disbursements and collections for this uh, happens through the same channel, uh, or do we have a separate, uh, like a, a separate channel or separate channel for this particular business? Yes. So yeah, the, the entire equation process for individual lending, individual lending is something which is very old in no given. We have been doing our individual lending business uh, for last about 12 years, and uh, processes and the product and processes set uh, as far as given is concerned. The entire equation process and collection process is separate from uh, group loan business. The customers who get, uh, graduate to IL, the underwriting mechanism is very very different, which is there in group loan. And uh, uh, apart from that, we have completely independent credit team right from the field to the to the top, which is uh, which has no relationship uh, with the business team. And the credit team uh, decides upon ticket size and customer equation uh, of individual lending customers. As far as repayment is uh, concerned, we offer different mediums uh, and different channels for repayment, uh, for repayment including uh, uh, UPI payment, SI payment, ACH payment and all other digital mediums which is possible 
for our customers to use. Apart from that, they can also uh, they are also welcome to send meetings as well as our branches for repayment. Okay, but sir, here the the model would be monthly, right? They will be paying monthly EMI sort of a model, right? We offer uh, you know frequencies, but generally we are seeing both in group loan as well as uh, in real lending. Customers uh, generally opt for monthly as it is convenient. For it. So the second question was with respect to the MFI uh, book only. So uh, after once a customer has defaulted and we've written return him off from the from the book, how much of the cooling uh, time do we uh, give to the customer that we can again sort of bring him on board or? So do we have a strategy there or do we have a, uh, a line of action there once we have written off a customer? Can we again onboard him after 6 months or 12 months of a time period? Sripal, uh, we have uh, consciously not taken on board any customers whom we have written on in the past. Right. So they are not in the qualifying list for acquisition. Even if it has been written off by somebody else, so even in that case we don't onboard such a yes. customer? Yes. For it, for it. So the third question was, we acquired 2.3 lakh new customers during this quarter. So what percentage of them were new to credit uh, customer uh, for us? So approximately 60-40. 60% customers who have had uh, tracks with uh, the industry and about 40% are new to credit. Okay, and so the, during this quarter disbursements, so in the MFI piece, what what were to the existing customers and what were to the new customers? Like what percentage? So about uh, 35 to 40 percent is disbursements to new customers, the NCA. And uh, between 65 to 70 percent are existing new customers. It. So the last question was, uh, if you could give details of the movement of NPA, that is, uh, what was the gross slippage, uh, recoveries, upgrades, uh, right of you already given in the filing? So on uh, uh, upgrade for the quarter, it was about 197 crores, which is about 10% of the gross NPA that we were carrying. And... Uh, the slippages was about 0.5%. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you, sir. And good luck for the next quarter, sir. I'll come in the queue if I have more questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Gautam Jain from GCJ Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, uh, my first question uh, pertains to your caseless collection, which is rising every quarter. Uh, so can you throw some light on it? Uh, uh, what is it uh, leading to such a high for increase in caseless collection and uh, uh, what any target we have in mind that we can reach to that level. Uh, just your thought on that. Yeah, so it all started uh, during pandemic. Before pandemic also we were trying, but pandemic was a time when even customers started to learn and uh, we also, uh, you know, learned that we have to provide different channels of repayment as uh, during pandemic, even we were not able to move into the field and uh, for the collection. So during the pandemic, we developed various channels, uh, digital channels through which uh, customers can uh, repay their EMI. And uh, so take example of all the wallets, UPI payment, SI, ACH. Uh, these all models uh, we established during pandemic. And customers also adapted and we saw a huge jump in, uh, you know, cashless repayment from the customers. Uh, looking at the success, uh, we have also, we, we are also, we have also developed a mobile application especially dedicated for microbanking customer segment, which we call Hello G1, where customers can use it, use it conveniently and to repay our EMI and do many other things uh, as far as banking is concerned. So today, uh, you know, uh, about 26% customers pay us digitally. This not customers, but at the same time it reduces customers, but at the same time it reduces your OPEX as well. Uh, as far as long term, uh, you know, you know, numbers are concerned. We are uh, looking at first looking at the milestone of 30%. But uh, the data that, which is available in the market that says that 
close to 40 to 45 percent customers at this point of time have a smartphones and we are targeting these customers uh, in the next financial year and this number will gradually increase so uh, we are looking at uh, gathering more and more customers uh, into a digital uh, repayment so that the uh, entire process of collections becomes uh, much more uh, you know inexpensive and which channel they use the most i mean uh, is google pay g pay or i mean it is it is, uh, it is uh, no U, uh, upi is the first and uh, followed by sai SI and ach okay and my second question is uh, uh, mr david has talked about you know uh, fi24 to be a good year and uh, credit cost to be around 1% uh, can you uh, also guide about what growth we would like to have in 2024 and what kind of cost to income ratio we want to achieve next year Gautam Bhai will come uh, to that uh, when we, as Mr. Davis mentioned, towards the close of the fiscal. Right now, we can say that the broad growth guidance will be 25% and uh, credit cost would be around 1%. Uh, and we will keep a good tap on the cost to income ratio. This year, nine months is around 55%. Probably we will be around that range only when we close the year, more or less. we will keep a very strong tab on the cost to income ratio will not want that to go up from very much thank you mr jain may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions we'll take the next question from the line of shailesh kanani from centrum broking please go ahead uh congratulations sir on a good set of numbers and uh, thanks for the opportunity so my uh, question with is 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 with respect to competitive landscape on the industry side uh, are we facing any uh, competition or are there any pressure on yields uh overall in the sea for in uh, industry wide there is a lot of uh, banks what we are seeing is there's a lot of uh, pass on that most of the banks are doing in terms of the interest rate hikes in fact uh, we have not been doing that for example in micro banking while peers have passed on a lot of rate hike we have only taken a 50 bps rate hike so far even in housing like mr davis mentioned it is linked to eblr the increased rate that we have done for the new disbursement is around 90 to 100 bps uh, we have not passed on yet so we still have that upper sleeve that we will be able to do a little bit of a rate hike and that's what he mentioned in his speech also that for whatever uh, cost of fund hike is there we'll have to see how we increase our yields going ahead We are not passing on as of now, uh, but uh, uh, as you want, we are comfortable where we are, and we uh, keep we that uh, as a buffer in our hand. We are closely monitoring the situation, and uh, we will take the calls at the right time because right now we are in a comfortable situation. <laughs> With respect to deposit as well, as we have oh. increased and we have seen good uh, deposit growth. Audio is breaking from your line. Yeah. just just yeah so i i was asking the same thing on uh, uh td rates uh, on deposit side as well since we are seeing good growth uh, we uh, are not seeing any pressure on that as well right not at the moment we are able to hold down to the rates okay sir and so uh, one one last question uh, we are entering into new geographies so can you just outline uh, some strategy on that or how we approach to a new state the credit culture over there and uh, what is our basic uh, premise of entering into a new state uh, okay so we recently entered telangana and uh, we went ahead with uh, the the liabilities front uh, our branches are uh, more into retail liabilities we will also be setting up the housing and the msc teams out there um, we are we are seeing a very good partnering uh, of deposits happening in telangana We've opened four branches at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Kanani. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions? The next question is from the line of Sharaj from the Burnham Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is on the SME uh, MSC lending side. What is the new strategy we are taking, and we've done tried this a couple of times, but it has not been successful. So, what is our right to win here this time, and what are we targeting? 
So on the MSC side, uh, yes, I mean, we did speak about revising our strategy. Um, we will be focusing a lot on the shorter tenor products um, in the strategy going forward, and also our customer segment would move towards the semi-formal and the formal segment. Um, so this, uh, this is something that we're working on, and uh, also we have launched um, the, uh, the product called the Prime Lab for our customer segments to, uh, for the longer term loans. Um, and this would be facilitated also to a large extent through our growth in fintech partnerships. So uh, what would be a right to win here is what I'm trying to understand. Essentially, uh, I mean, uh, it, it's a new customer segment we're going after, uh, new market entirely. So like, uh, uh, what is it that we'll be able, uh, what is it that makes you think that we'll be able to succeed here? Like, what is it that we'll be doing differently? Like, I didn't get your question. Sorry, could you but just the entire not clear? Yeah, sorry. The entire market segment, doesn't the customer profile, the business is going to be different now, right? So what is it that uh, will give us our edge here to succeed? So we have always been in the semi-formal segment, but we are going to focus a lot more in the semi-formal segment. We have moved out of the informal segment. Um, our uh, USP would continue to be customer service and uh, you know technology would play a very important role for these customers. Okay, and and in the ticket side, you mentioned this time for the MSC lending, it's gone up from 20 lakhs to 40 lakhs, and currently XD fintech lending. So what is the difference here? So the fintech lending was short-term uh, bill discounting kind of a product, where the ticket sizes were very small and the tenors were also very short. So since we have discontinued that product for the time being, the difference uh, is there. A uh, core lending uh, book the ticket sizes have not moved up significantly. Thank you, Mr. Swaraj. May we request that you return to the question key for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Deepak Thakran from 1729 Advisors. Please go ahead. Mr. Thakran, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Mr. Thakran, please unmute your line from your side. It's muted. As there is no response on the current participant, we'll move on to the next question from the line of Ashlesh Sonjay from Kota Securities. Please go ahead. Hi team, congratulations. A couple of questions from my side. Firstly, on the deposit front, we have seen quite robust growth there, both on the savings account as well as retail term deposits. Uh, and I, I believe the TD rate has been increased by only about 40 basis points since September. So what exactly has worked for us in terms of our strategy to garner deposits here? If you can elaborate on that, please. So I think what has worked for us is, of course, the um, interest rates. Uh, but I think this has also been supplemented with, uh, uh, with our uh, customer service, where we have been able to provide uh, relationship banking services to our customers. Uh, getting a lot more granular, and also we have seen um, the digital working well for us. Uh, we have also introduced the cash management, QR, and uh, we have taken on a lot of efforts to increase the marketing activities in the uh, local areas of our branches. Um, and we have done two major uh, All India uh, marketing activities on newspapers, press, um, TV, uh, that has uh, got us a lot of customer leads. And on the other side, we've also worked a lot on increasing the productivity of our staff. Um, and this has also, you know, again, uh, we have done very uh, thorough workshops with our branch managers um, and training to our sales teams. All these put together, I guess, has increased um, the deposit base. Just you might have seen us also in the New Zealand match yesterday. Advertising. We are all over the place, so branding has become very important. Okay, good to know, sir. Sir, uh, would you say we we would have added 
uh, more to the sales staff on the liability side during the quarter? Not increased our sales staff. Okay. Okay. If you okay. see our overall uh, employee count has not gone up significantly, so not much of addition has been there. In okay. fact, it has gone down. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, second question is on the. Uh, we would be adding a bit now uh, with the new branches, and even in the existing branches, we have identified few branches which have much larger potential. So there we would be adding, and uh, you will see the benefit of that coming in. Okay, thanks, Deepak. And secondly, on the individual loan book within MFI, uh, can you talk about the range of ticket sizes that we offer and the tenors offered in that segment? So uh, uh, our range of uh, range is 51,000 to 3 lakh, and it depends upon how many cycles customers are uh, with us in GL and in IL as well. Uh, as far as uh, their average uh, ticket size is concerned, uh, uh, all the customers that we have lent, it is close to 1.2 lakh. And uh, the other two questions you had? Tenor, tenor. Tenor is, uh, no, because uh, we are now moving, we, have, we, are, we also offer customers tenor up to three years as well, uh, which is maximum. Our average tenor is close to 26 months. Sorry, and if I may just squeeze in one last question on the slippages front. Can you clarify what the actual uh, slippage number was in rupee terms and what is the way for accounting slippages? So let's say your loan slips into NP in the month of October but recovers in the same quarter, let's say in the month of November. Uh, would that be counted as a slippage uh, the way you report it? So uh, our overall slippage number was 110 crores. Uh, this was next slippages. So there is an upgrade also which gets reported in the same quarter. So slippages and uh, upgrades are netted off. So overall, I would say that the, uh, the next slippage was about 14 crores for the quarter. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Potar from Safar Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi, Deepak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Um, mm, uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers, sir. Um, so just wanted to understand uh, just one question I have. So in terms of rate hike, uh, you mentioned uh, since November we have not done um, any kind of rate hike, right? Um, uh, and um, this is the last cycle we have not participated, right? So any plans uh, for further rate hike that uh, might be on the cards? Uh, so, so, so any thought process would be helpful? Uh, not at the moment, but then we are closely watching the situation and uh, we will take the calls as and when it is required. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because, uh, because you did say that next year we are expecting some pressure on NIMS, right? So. Yeah, I, I just want to add, see the thing is that when we did make the rate hike, we did a good rate hike that we didn't have to keep adjusting 20, 30 basis points here and there. So we we realized the cycle in which or the rate at which the markets and interest rates were moving and we took a bold step in November and we have held on to that. Mm -hmm. Now going forward, if uh, you know the Central Bank or the Reserve Bank of India continues to increase rates, then we have to watch that very carefully. Mm -hmm. So we are watching and we will do what it requires to keep us in the forefront of the deposit growth. Mm -hmm. So NIMS, yes, when NIMS are being squeezed, we also have to look at the lending side. And as I said, there's a potential that if the uh, RBI raises interest rates, we may look at having to raise the lending rates as well. Because the lending rates on the microbanking book we have raised only once in September by 50 basis points, and we have not done anything else after that. So we have an opportunity to see if the rates go up you know, and continue to go up. We may have to raise the lending rates as well. Fair enough. Understood. And, and in terms of pressure on NEMS, so, so what sort of uh, basis point would be comfortable with? I mean, in terms of uh, NEMS compression, if at all next year we can see. Um, I mean, what, 20, 25 basis point, um, uh, would that be comfortable for us to kind of absorb uh, and uh, not uh, go for the rate hike? 
Deepak, we'll talk about uh, more financial data about next year when we come back fourth quarter, when the fourth quarter. Okay. Also, one more thing I'd like, uh, like to add on the rate hike on the TD side, our uh, liquidity currently is quite good and uh, we believe uh, we are quite well placed for uh, this quarter disbursement even for the fourth quarter which is generally expected to be a little higher compared to the other quarters. So we'll see how and what kind of rate hike is required. Thank you, Mr. Podar. May we request that to return to the question queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Mr. Sakran from 1729 Advisors. Please go. Ahead. Mr. Deepak Sakran, um, your line is in talk. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Deepak. Hi. Hi. This is Sanjay from 1729. Um, just a quick question, and that is, what is your sort of Sorry, run rate, long term sort of ROA? Breaking from your line, please check. Sorry, uh, I have one question. What is your long term return on assets, the return on equity estimate slash target as you look at your business across life? And the second question is, by when do you think the reverse merger with Ujivan Small, Ujivan Financial? will be completed? Uh, Deepak, on the longer term uh, ROA, sustainable ROA, is that what you are asking for? We believe in this kind of a business, a 2.25 to 2.5% kind of a sustainable ROA is easily manageable. And uh, yeah, and with a few years being exception, like current year was a good year for as an exception. So we are having that 4% kind of a return. And uh, ROE is largely a factor of your what kind of uh, capital adequacy you are maintaining. So given this year was a very, uh, this year is after a rough patch so we are maintaining a high uh, capital adequacy, this wouldn't be the case. So our ROE will accordingly adjust as the capital adequacy move. Industry-wise, I think the capital adequacy for uh, SFBs is around 20%, 20 to 22%. On your reverse merger question, uh, we have mentioned in our press release also, and Mr. David covered in his uh, speech also, in SAB, uh, we are awaiting SAB approval on the application that we have made, and then we will move to NCLT. With all the other regulatory approvals and all, we expect the process to close by September 23. Thank you very much. And congrats on a good quarter. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhuvanesh Garg from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I would like to know uh, what would be the number of uh, active customers in group loan and uh, how it has moved in last three, four years, uh, three, four quarters. <coughs> so our uh, active uh, micro banking customer, which I have offhand, offhand is uh, around... Uh, 20, uh, 34 lakhs and it is up 25% uh, YTD. 25% YTD. Oh, yeah. 34. Oh. That's it from my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Dante Wadia from Dante Equity. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, so, my first question is regarding the floating provision. When are you planning to write back the amount to our book and what's the thought, thought process behind this provision now because uh, COVID is done, I think. So I, I want to understand this first. Yeah. 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 Hi, this is Ramesh Murthy here. Floating provision is governed by RBI norms here. So uh, it really depends on when Reserve Bank of India allows us to uh, take a call on floating provision. We have represented it uh, this matter to Reserve Bank of India, and uh, we are waiting for a response. So we have to just wait till RBI comes back to us because this is under a regulatory guideline. Okay, uh, and my second question is, uh, your uh, H2 guidance was similar to H1 guidance, which was 500 crore. Would you like to upgrade this guidance to maybe 600 crore now because of uh, how the quarter three went? 
we just mentioned Q4 would be more or less similar to Q3 in our speech, opening remarks. So if you yes, want to move... guidance would be 600, right? 300 is okay. Also, what's so your uh, thing on the floating provision? It's good to have a little bit of a uh, floating provision, a little bit of extra cushion on your balance sheet. Yeah, so my last question is regarding the secured and uh, unsecured book ratio. You said you you want to take it towards 50-50. By when do you see this happening? Yeah, we we have a broad timeline for about uh, five years. Within five years, we'd like to see this there. So uh, from the next financial year, you will start seeing the uh, uh, the uh, unsecured book coming down a little bit at a time till it reaches 50-50. So the uh, I mean when you, when I say five years, I'm talking about 28-29 in that range. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will take last few questions. The next question is from the line of Ayush Vimal from Clearview Capital. Please go ahead. Thank Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Mr. Davis suggested that uh, the share of secured book will actually go up from 28% to 50% over the next five, six years. I just wanted to understand the impact of this on, on the limb over the long term and, and the return on assets. Yeah, I mean, definitely the uh, pricing on the on the uh, secured book is lower than the micro-banking book. But, uh, you know, we hope that uh, credit quality and other aspects will also uh, enhance the, uh, uh, the longer-term return on assets will be around the 2 to 2.5%, which is what we expect. And the uh, and and also the return on equity will have to be in line with uh, uh, what we are expecting from the market for this sort of thing. But uh, the main thing is that we build a balance book, and the risk is more you know mitigated through this process. Thank you. And uh, the next question I had was uh, on your on, on on the strategy that uh, you know, you'll be entering the gold loan segment uh, sometime next year to show up as a broad book. You know, given that uh, the segment is, uh, you know, under intense competition at present and, and there's, there's a lot of yield compression with banks entering the space, just wanted to understand the rationale for entering the segment at this point in time. Um, so, gold loan is, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, first thing is that we have entered into gold loan market. We have uh, launched it in some branches and we are testing and uh, we intend to, you know, uh, start operation in about close to 50 branches next financial year. Uh, you are right that uh, the competition is intense in gold loan, but at the same time, we see that uh, among our micro banking customers, the overlap with the gold loan is close to 10 to 11 percent, and that is a huge number. And we, we see that our customer uh, in, is in demand of gold loan, and because we are giving giving loan, uh, we are also trying to, you know, offer them gold loan. Apart from microbanking loan, we have other customers also in the branches, including branch banking, MSA, and housing. There also we see demand. And uh, looking at the customer demand with a uh, in-depth survey uh, with the customers and even uh, open market customers, we decided to enter into gold loan market uh, business. This uh, will also this will allow customers to take uh, you know uh, one-stop shop kind of solution where they can uh, get all kind of loans that they are they need uh, from us. At the same time, it will also help us increase our uh, secure loan portfolio, which we target to reach 50 50 by in the next five years. And in addition, we will be launching this product in identified geographies where uh, we believe that it makes sense for us. Thank you, Mr. Mugimal. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions? The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Most of my queries are answered. Uh, just one thing, like this quarter, we had a QOQ growth, uh, but somehow, you know, the other expenses sort of uh, made us not grow the uh, pre-provision operating profit. So, are there any one-offs related to the tech uh, or some other initiative that we have taken which are expected to taper off in the coming quarters, or uh, this is uh, business as usual? 
You are talking about other OPEX, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you did grow your book uh, on a quarter-to-quarter basis, but your pre-provision operating profit did not grow. So, are there any one-offs related to the expenses also in the PNL, which are starting to sort of build up? One thing that was there last quarter was a PSL income of around 14 crore, which is not there this quarter. PSL income doesn't come every quarter. It comes like uh, in blocks when we sell the certificates and make take that income. So last quarter that income was there. This quarter that income is not there. To some extent the finance cost has gone up because of the rising interest rate as you have been listening on the call. Other OPEX, they have been a little bit of a marketing spend that we have done, little bit of an investment that has gone in, for example, Mr. Davis mentioned in his speech also, like one of the revenue of the micro banking side is QR code, so a little bit of investment has gone there. So all those investment, a little bit of branding and all that has put that other OPEX at 217. Other than that, there is no one-off item in the other OPEX, but yet on the income side, that income is not there versus Q on Q if you are comparing. Understood. And this long-term ROA sort of a thing that you're looking in the range of 2 to 2.5% uh, seems to be pretty low compared to where we are already at 4.5% because it would mean essentially that even if you are going to double your asset book in three years perhaps with 25% growth, you will still be at the same level of uh, profit after tax or something like that. So is that an overly conservative guidance or what is leading to this sort of a number? So what we said is a sustainable ROA. The question was the sustainable ROA in this kind of a business. This year, as you are aware, the credit cost is almost negligible and the bad debt recoveries are quite high. That has increased or that has skewed the ROA this year to or towards on a higher side. But a long-term sustainable with all the changes that we are talking about, the ROA sustainable should be around 2.5. Understood. And what kind of cost to income that you are targeting? Any any guidance on that? We'll come with more details number, detailed numbers when we come towards the end of the quarter, uh, end of the fiscal. Understood. Thank you and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Gautam from GS Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations on the set of numbers, sir. Uh, basically, even of the macro station, sir, because uh, uh, our work, uh, after giving very good uh, numbers, post listing, and uh, somehow our, we when uh, in the bad phase, our uh, good performance could not sustain. So besides COVID, what were the factors which were there and uh, what have been the key learnings and how sustainable is our business now and any concerns we still have to? Follow your question. There's a little bit of a background noise. Basically, the question was that uh, our company is very good. Mr. Gautam, the audio is raised from your line. Uh, please check. Hello, is it okay now? Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Yeah, there yeah, is better. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to understand the reasons behind the improved performance of late, and is it sustainable, in, particularly in view of the... Uh, uh, we went through a bad patch post, uh, post-COVID. COVID was one of the major reasons. What were the other reasons, sir? Yeah, the uh, bad patch that we went through in 20, uh, tw- fiscal year 21-22 uh, was primarily due to COVID because we recognized, you know, many of our customers were affected by the COVID conditions and we had to recognize and make provisions for that. So that was what we did and, uh, you know, followed all the accounting and uh, RBI guidelines on that front. Now that uh, is behind us. We are turning around. And this year we have had, uh, you know, fantastic recoveries. Our collection team and our credit team have worked us effectively with our customers. And what we are seeing is perhaps second to none in the industry, in, at least definitely in the small SFB space. So I think that is helping us now. 
this cannot be this is a, a very unique situation and when we come to a norm, more normal environment next financial year and beyond the things will be different and we will be operating at a normal thing not at current levels of profitability it will come more normal profitability but we expect the business to continue to do well and go back to what we were doing pre covid days in terms of how we were operating at that time our profitability was good and you know the business was doing well so i think when we get back to normal conditions that is what we are aiming for okay sir and sir not and sir one more thing sir in the current rising interest rate scenario uh, how will be our performance be in and what can be the impact on the credit growth sir maybe uh, you know the interest rate environment so far we are not seeing uh, a, a problem with uh, loan growth and that i think is not just us the whole industry is continuing to see because we are coming out of covid and there is a demand for credit so uh, i think that will continue into next year as well now if interest rates continue to remain high throughout next year then we'll have to see how to address that situation but the whole industry is expecting a turnaround or a decline in interest interest rate to start sometime in the second half of the financial year definitely so once that happens i think the uh, credit demand will continue to be sustained thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll take the last question from the line of tushar sarda from athena investments please go ahead yeah thank thank you for the opportunity uh, i just wanted to uh, understand your normalized profit so you got uh, ppop of 389 crores this year which has 30 crore miscellaneous income or bad debt recovery which i assume will not recur in a normal year right so uh, you know we have had now we have a lot of nps so it may continue for a year or so but after that it will taper off is that assumption correct true that's right so bad debt recovery is something because we had a lot of bad debt accumulation last year so yeah. the recovery process and our investment into the collections infrastructure has given us some very good result this year but over a period of next 4 to 6 quarters obviously this number is not going to sustain and you will have credit costs coming in you are guiding for 100 basis point on the gross loan that is right that is right okay. and what will be the tax rate uh, one should assume 25% yes yeah please okay that's it that's it for my side thank you very much and congratulations on a superb set of uh, performance thank you so thank you. much thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments well thank you very much i appreciate the time all of you have taken to join us and uh, participate in this uh, discussion and conference i'd like to thank our partners iifl for organizing this and appreciate the support that they have given thank you very much and have a good evening thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of ifl securities limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line